Munkester Castle itself is uh, reputedly built on Roman foundations and obviously there's a definite Roman heritage here with Ravenglass originally being a Roman port. I believe Agricola sailed in in 79 AD with the Roman fleet and uh, they used it as a jumping off point for the north of England and we're seen as the start of the Hadrianic frontier that as I understand it goes all the way from Ravenglass right through to um, Budapest or even Syria some people tell me. Um, so we're on the edge of empire but my frustration is for years and years we know we've been sitting on great archaeology um, and it's really relatively untouched. We have the highest freestanding Roman walls in the north of England with the bathhouse. It's a very special place down there when, you, when you're on your own amongst those walls. It's almost a mystical place. The community are very keen for projects to happen. We as the landowners are very keen for the project to happen and we're on the edge of that, that sort of tingly feeling. It's almost like unwrapping a Christmas present. You know, what will be in that box? What will be under that soil? The Lake District National Park are involved because they obviously want to make sure that the site's managed and protected for the future. And the only way you can do that is if you've got a handle on what you know is actually there. York Archaeological Trust are running the excavation. So they'll be on site each day and they will be talking to the volunteers each day. Um, about how to go about it and that's nice actually because you know it's they're there to they're there to help them and working with a local community and making their wish happen. I've worked with volunteers for many years the main technique they'll learn is to carry out archaeological excavation and that includes not just digging but also the recording so that there'll be an archive of what they dug They'll also be told about uh, geophysical survey, uh, finds work. So any finds that they uh, dig up, they're going to uh, wash it and identify it and, and mark it. So it's all, again, it's all there for the archive, for posterity. I'm optimistic that we'll find something. It's just at this stage, we've got really no idea what that's going to be. I started at the National Park two or three years ago now and one of my objectives was to try and develop this community project and I'm really really looking forward to it. It's, you know all the bits are coming together now and I'm really pleased to say that we'll be on site tomorrow. So then basically whenever it looks like there's a change in the level, it's a feature you yeah, measure, 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 measure down. down from that level. Yeah, from I always used down. to enjoy being on my knees in the mud when I was a child, so it's nice to get back to it. What I get out of it is that those stones, like, who held these the last time? And that's what I get out of it. I feel you know, close to them. So there's another chunk we've got to see with pebbles, really, right the way around. The Lake District is lucky. We've got so many traces right through from Neolithic to medieval sites that just haven't been touched. So it's a fascinating landscape. You never know quite what you're going to find. And, and the company's good as well. Yeah, the oh, the company's good. excellent, Bridget, <laughs> isn't it? <Yeah. laughs> uh, so in order to excavate these properly, we need to see their full extent. Yeah. And that will I didn't think I'd be sitting in the sunshine washing little bits of stoneware. It's very therapeutic. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And it's nice because uh, uh, we're allowed to do anything. We're just kind of choosing. If we're interested in doing something, 
then uh, we relocate it sooner or later to the task uh, if it's available, of course. I think I'll do this all week. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> As well as the excavations, we've got the geophysical survey. That's the other big field work uh, element that we're doing at the minute. There's the uh, magnetometer, which looks at uh, magnetic anomalies in the ground. So things like stone walls there will have a, a big impact compared to the natural subsoil background. Uh, burning has a big bearing on that as well. So things like ovens and structures are very easy to find uh, with the magnetometry. Here it was a, it was a hand-pulled type of chariot uh, effect, you know, quite a rapid method of survey. Uh, the resistivity instrument looks at slight changes in the, in the kind of electrical conductivity of the ground and that's better for finding more subtle features such as pits and uh, maybe burials even. And that has massive implications for understanding the size of this settlement and what it was being used for. Not too many people are aware of the environmental side of archaeology, but um, it's, it's a good insight and most people are surprised at, at what we do. But it is one of the most important pieces of the jigsaw because we're painting a broader picture of the landscape uh, around the site at the end, how people were living, what their diets were like, what the, how high the water table was, what kind of flowers were grown outside the front of their front door, what plants, trees, all sorts of things. We've got a much bigger picture of the landscape. The environmental materials that float, like charcoal, seeds and so on, float to the top of the barrel and we collect them in two different sizes of sieves. We then put it away and dry it and we'll look at that in the lab later and we'll look for seeds and small things and that. What's left in the barrel, things that don't float, which also harbour all sorts of artefacts. So you've got pottery, glass, perhaps bits of leather, we take these artefacts, separate them, weigh them and dry them and they're all added to a, a database. I can't say enough about the volunteers, they've been really, really brilliant. brilliant. We are very pleased. We work together on the Parish Council and we've worked on many other things as well for the good of the village. We've been mates a long time, haven't we? And we just. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say we're like an old marigold. <laughs> Come and keep bickering. <laughs> we knew where the fort was, we knew where the bathhouse was, but we've never ever known where the Vicus was. So we wanted to know where the civilians were who backed up the soldiers in the fort. Uh, and we asked merely for £6,000. And they said, oh, well, we think you ought to you know, bid for a bit more money. And Brian and I thought, oh, another couple of thousand, that'd be quite nice. Uh, and they said, no, you want, it ought to be a phase one bid, which is 90 to 200,000. It sort of ranges, doesn't it? it, it it's a huge There's amount of money. No way we could have dealt with 90,000. We just hadn't got the facilities. But we were fortunate that the Lake District National Park Archaeology Department stepped in and said, we'll do it for you. The pottery expert who came got very excited when he saw the pottery because some of it is very delicate and, and it wasn't he didn't expect to see pottery of that uh, exquisiteness here. The only other thing I find so amazing is the fact that the Roman level is only that down and those whopping great stones which are incredible because they've got to be Roman you know they're big they're chunky they're in a straight line. I think it's conveying to people what we've got here the number of people who have been here who are interested. It's amazing how much interest there has been from the village. We've had uh, most of the children in the village up yeah. with their parents and everyone keeps asking us, what have you found? <laughs> it's great. Chances like this don't come along too often and it's great that we can involve the kids 
the excitement on their faces when they know that something is 2,000 years old. You can't beat the reaction to that. What did we see when we first came out on site? What were the three things that are in Roman raven glass? Can you remember? Uh, was it the bathhouse? Yep. The yeah. vicus and, and the fort. Oh, well done. And what was the vicus? The vicus is the, the village. Yeah. The village. Yeah. And who lived in the vicus? Family, Family and friends. Poor people. Yeah. And, yeah, and lots people of people living in the street. And who lived in the fort? Soldiers. 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 By engaging the local children, they get a chance to have the hands on their heritage. Primary school kids are great because they really embrace ideas, they get really, really excited by things. History is exciting at that age. There's lots of ways that heritage is communicated, whether that's through websites, through museums, through reading a book or watching a telly program. Even if they go away and explore one of those as a result of what they've seen today, then we've done a good job. It's a great opportunity for kids in the local area to know about their heritage and hopefully inspire them so that they might want to be the archaeologists of the future. Oh, it's been a fantastic success with the community. We couldn't have done it without the hundred or so people who've worked on the project. They've done most of the actual digging. We've just been giving them the moral support, really. We've uh, found some evidence for Roman occupation in all three trenches. We've had a really good time, and I'm really looking forward to being here next year. A particular interest on this, on this rim is that it's got some marks that were made on it um, after firing. I'll be very sad when they go away. <laughs> but I'll be back next year. This one, we know it's, it's from Cranbeck because it's got the paint on it. Really exciting, I mean, I, I just uh, fired by enthusiasm to really discover more. It normally has a very nice orange, very shiny slip on the, on the outside, but as you can see, it's actually lost it. There was a child who actually found some mortarium and he would remember that always. To know that you're walking where people lived and worked 2,000 years ago, you know, we know they're elegant people, we know they were cultured, but to see their culture here is something special. We'll be talking out on it and dining out on it for the next year.